but I've got a twin brother who plays over in the States and he was actually the one who got scouted at the Bulls first. Like he was a quite quite a big I suppose prodigy if you want to call it at school and I didn't really wasn't in the picture. I was just like a I suppose like buy one, get one, get one free kind of thing. <laughs> he was just hammering away at like you can't underestimate these guys. These guys really got a bad they, they they played a perfect game that day, you know. I think people don't understand how good the league is at the moment. Yep. As, as a centre, I get to play against an international centre every weekend. Yeah. So like, I mean, I'm playing against Osama Karevi or Fafita. So I feel like my game's developing here, which is great. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of enjoyment out of it. So um, I don't really miss Super Rugby. I, I dig the league over here and it's, it's really good, you know. Guys, welcome back to The Couches. Good to see you again and a very warm welcome to Jesse Creel. Thanks for having me. How are we feeling today? Yeah, good. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, that was good. What about the energy? Oh, I'm just, uh, I'm looking forward to the, having a conversation with this handsome man over here. Awesome. Not him. <laughs> He's 40. It's a bit harsh. I oh, know, it starts very early, doesn't it? So, uh, guys, let's, let's kick off by talking a little bit about how you know each other. Uh, when you first played together or against each other or first came across each other, well... Look, I'm going to be honest. I remember playing against the Bulls and I remember looking across thinking, who's this really good looking bloke? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. Absolutely shredded from head to toe. But no, I, yeah, I think that's why I come across you when you're playing, playing for the Bulls and absolute specimen of an athlete, that's for sure. Played my first game against these guys. I still think, I was chatting to Fuff earlier because I heard you guys were going to be here. And um, we were just chatting about that backline that we played against. That day. It was about my debut for the Springboks um, in Brisbane. And I remember you guys were stacked. It was like yourself. Um, Quaid, uh, you were playing. Yeah, my first uh, game back. Adam Ashley Cooper was yeah. playing. Izzy Flard, fullback. Um, yeah, it was like one of the best backlines I think I've ever come up against. Um, it was, yeah, good memory. We just got there in the end, too. What year yeah, was you it? guys what, what won it. it. Tavita Kundrani scored it there. 2015. 2015, yeah. that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That was my first game back from France. Yeah. So I was shitting myself all week. Um, Can you imagine me? Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, but it. Um, uh, we we're lucky to get that one. I think I um, I did my lung in that um, in that game. Yeah, I went off at half time because I did. I popped some cartilage in, in the lateral side of my knee, so I was off. I remember yeah. that one. Um, but that yeah, was, it was good. That yeah. was a game where Hoops put that big hit on. Was it Skulk? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. So were you on the pitch for the whole whole game? Uh, I was. Then I went off to uh, just because I uh, I got tackled when inside ball off Matty Tamua. Got tackled, but I landed on the ball um, and it kind of winded me. And I was like running around trying to just get my breath back, thinking I was winded. But then when I coughed, I was coughing up blood. So I went in to get checked. Um, and they said, how do you feel? I said, I feel all right to go out. So I went back out for... Out to go uh, like out or... No, I, I felt great field. to go out. <laughs> <laughs> Once we won, I felt really uh, good to go out. No, but uh, whether you're good to go back on the field. So I went back on the field. But then the next morning, um, just when I was coughing, I had a bit of a tight chest and I was still coughing blood. Luckily, because then we went and got um, tested, and I think I'd done something to, is it your lung or liver? I did something inside, um, which could have been really bad if I actually made that flight, because we'll go to Argentina the next week. You, you puncture your lung? Or, or? That's what I did. Yeah. I didn't yep. know that. I actually didn't. Yeah, so I missed the next two games, so I think you're both in Argentina. That's right. You, yeah. I stayed yeah, I back in Sydney just to do a bit of fitness and whatever else, but... It was a good game. Anyway, we won. Yeah. It's not about me. It's not my podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, you'll realise he tries to make everything no, about himself. No, no, no that, that one. He'll, he'll turn that one into his experiences, and this is what I... So just, I'm just... I'm learning. <laughs> you learn off your elders. Guys, I want to I jump to the start of your career, Jesse, um, and talk a little bit about Craven Week, which I'm not sure... Do you guys know what that is? No say one. it again. Craven Week? Craven Week, no. Jesse, do you want to explain? Yeah, it's bit? basically just like... Uh, you guys call it Year 12? Oh, so yeah. it's like the big uh, week where the sharks and the bulls and I mean each I suppose province has got their best of all the schools get chosen for like a sharks craven week team, and it's kind of the pinnacle of schoolboy rugby where you go and then you play against each other and then a South African schools team gets selected from that. So yeah, that's basically craven week. Yeah, yeah you guys must get because we've seen schoolboys crowds pretty big in South Africa. Yeah. That that must be pretty massive as well. Yeah, schoolboy rugby is pretty pretty big back home. Um, I know it's pretty big. Uh, in Australia and New Zealand as well, but South Africa, it's it's really big. At the Craven Week, it's uh, everyone comes. It's only our Craven Week was in Port Elizabeth. I don't know if you guys played there, yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, there was really big crowds, and I mean, all the like the scouts and the, the agents and the coaches, and I mean, I remember Hayden Kamei was at our one, and 
um, yeah, he was a Springbok coach at the time. And um, yeah, I remember him coming, coming to talk to me at Craven Week. Um, I had a decent Craven Week and uh, I suppose that's where everything kind of just kicked off for me. And um, yeah, I've got a great opportunity to go up to the Bulls and uh, yeah, I suppose everything just kind of kicked on from there. Is it a full week? So you play what games every day for a week? Every second day, I think. I think we played like Monday, Wednesday. I think yeah, like Yuck. every every couple of days. But it must it was, be like it's Queensland schools versus ACT schools, New South Wales schools. Yeah, pretty much. for a week. Yeah, yeah they call that yeah. Australian schools. Australian schools. Australian schools. Australian schools, Australian schools. Yeah. yeah. Just on that schoolboy rugby. I mean, you you'd be the same. I remember when we'd go there. There's seven super sport. There's seven channels. I think three or four of them would be schoolboy rugby teams playing. Yeah. So it's it's got really big now, and um, uh, there's like a whole. Um, schoolboy league. I remember back home for us, we'd have like two or three games a year in the schoolboy season, where Supersport would uh, the, the provider back home would like televise the the actual like a, like a school schoolboy derby. Yeah. And that was massive. You know, the guys all oh, yeah. getting ready for a TV <laughs> game and uh, everyone was all stoked. Yeah. You know, and um, the guys trying to keep the mullets going because you weren't allowed <laughs> those at school. And so yeah, it was uh, all big occasions for us at school, and it still is um, being pushed quite hard back home, which is great because it gives guys such awesome opportunities. Not just in South Africa, and I know a lot of uh, countries uh, around the world, um, clubs in France, uh, maybe over here in Japan, I'm not sure, but like guys get opportunities to go abroad and, and, and play and, and get an opportunity to I just kick on from there, you know? Mm. So, um, wow. yeah, it's, it's been an awesome, good platform, yeah. Yeah, you see, I mean, you said everything kicked off from there. Yeah. Um, so, because you, you went, ended up in Pretoria, like you said, but you weren't from Pretoria, were you? No, so actually, before that, I've got a twin brother. He plays over in the States, and... Um, he was actually the one who got scouted at the Bulls first. I like kind of, I didn't really wasn't in the picture. I was just like a, I suppose, like buy one get one get one free kind of thing. <laughs> so um, yeah, he he was he was a quite quite a big, I suppose, prodigy if you want to call it at school. And I hadn't kind of, I suppose, hit my straps quite yet. And um, yeah, had a good got to Craven Week. He was injured. He did his shoulder, and I ended up getting into Craven Week. And I just had a really good Craven Week and just. Got awesome opportunities for, from from there, and um, got cra- contracted with him, and we kind of went as a, yeah. as a as a as a package up to the Bulls, and yeah, we just was kicked on from there. Did you both play twenties together? I think it was in New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah, I remember yeah. seeing that yeah. on TV. Yeah. Yeah. So we both played um, one game. We played in the centres together, which was a really special yeah. thing for for us. We played most of our junior rugby together, so yeah, it was good. It must have been good making that move to to. Pretoria with him as well made it a bit easier. Yeah, well, you guys know Pretoria. Oh. A lot of Afrikaans spoken, and yeah. Yeah, I'm obviously or grew up English speaking. Um, so yeah, we got up there. My brother didn't really adapt to the Afrikaans at well. I kind of remember Victor telling me you need <laughs> you need to learn Afrikaans, otherwise you're not going to you're not going <laughs> to play. So I kind of got into got into the Afrikaans, and um, yeah, and absolutely loved it up there. I mean, I had I think eight eight great years up there. Um, played played quite a few games for the Bulls and um, got some awesome opportunity to play with um, a few like a lot of legends over there. Some of the guys uh, here at growing up mm-hmm. and um, yeah, got some great opportunities and um, yeah, just kicked on from there. What was that like as a young kid going into that type of setup? I mean, the Bulls obviously yeah. incredibly successful Super Rugby yeah. team, but you guys got guys like Victor. Yeah. I think Fred Dupree was yeah, still there so, at that time. Yeah. I think Mornay might have still Bucky's been there. Bucky's would have been. Yeah, yeah, Brian Abana. Yeah, there, so there. I kind of finished my my year 12 exams and the day after actually i think it was the same day flew up to the bulls and started the, their super rugby preseason with them myself uh, my brother and andre pollard um we went straight up there so missed the kind of like oh, we, we yeah, call yeah, it yeah. the trick rage back yeah. home where guys just go mental for two weeks and do all the wrong things that they probably shouldn't but um so yeah i missed out on that but um yeah i had a great like first taste of, of super rugby preseason and Got to train with all these guys, and it yeah, it was awesome. I really got like guys like Victor Free, they like guys. Those guys really kind of embraced me. And uh, is it very player driven because you've got such senior players, or is it a balance between the coaches having a lot of say? Or well, that time, um, I think guys like Victor and them, they kind of achieved everything you suppose yeah. you can in rugby. So I think they kind of like really drove mm. um, most of the things. You know, I think you'd know that as you guys were like when you guys were that group, that core group. You guys kind of drove most of the things and the coach just kind of manages yeah. players and manages the group. Mm. So, um, yeah, I was very lucky. I say now, I mean, if you look um, back then, I, it was, as a youngster coming in, it was so easy because you kind of just like, this is my job. This is all I need to focus on. I don't need to focus on anything mm. else. Where, as I see now, as you get older as a player, you've got, like, you've got a kind of, there's a lot more responsibility yeah. and a lot more like moving parts. Mm. So I think back then it was just like, uh, like 
I was playing fullback at the time. I was like, catch the ball and run. <laughs> yeah. Or just do this or do that. It's like, well, I just had to focus on what I needed to do. And um, so it was a lot more simple, I suppose. Was it daunting? You know, like you're saying, you looked up to a lot of these players. Yeah. First thing out of school, now you're training with people that you're used to seeing on TV. Yeah, I think um, I've thought about that quite a lot. I mean, back then I was just, I, I was just had this. Carefree, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, I kind of, I remember. I can't even remember who was, was saying, I think it was maybe Dion Stachman or someone. He was just like, listen, you need to go as hard as you can. And I mean, I think I gained a lot, like some of the players' respect by, by training really hard. And mm-hmm. uh, and kind of, I think if you go there and you kind of put people on pedestals and stuff like that, mm. you kind of, you don't really... You don't compete yeah, as much. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, was, I was quite competitive and I, st- I still think I am when I was growing up. And um, yeah, so I think that so I was in there to kind of, I wanted to play for the Bulls and obviously the Springboks, so it was always a big goal for me, you know. So I've seen a lot of um, stuff on social media. You're obviously yeah. big <laughs> on being in the gym. Is yeah. that a big focus of yours? You like you like the weights, you like lifting and 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 being in that space. Yeah, I, that's something that I've. I think just fitness in general is something that um, yeah, I suppose just makes me feel really good. Mm. And you know that 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 feeling you get from from doing or keeping fit and stuff like that. And it was always just something that. Um, yeah, it gave me a routine, I suppose, growing up, and it was just something that part of my daily life and yeah. things like that, and something that I really enjoyed. You know, I really enjoy having a routine and kind of like structure to my day, yeah. so it was always part of that. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. What was that first meeting with with Victor like? Because he's obviously is you know quite an imposing guy because of what he'd achieved, but also yeah. he's physically quite an imposing guy. Yeah, the thing is, when I got there, guys were so just everyone was so cool. You know, they were just like. Welcome to the group, and um, I remember Victor. Yeah, always like just being a great guy, you know. And um, I suppose all the guys. I mean, Vainant Ulafi was there at the time. Um, all those legends I can name, countless guys, but they were also embracing and and just really good guys, you know. And I think that obviously made us feel a lot well, very welcome, and it just made the whole thing pretty cool, you know. Was well, uh, Bucky's there at that point? Bucky's wasn't there at the time. He was. I think he was in France. Yeah, I'm not sure. I was about I think to say, how would you have gone if yeah, you didn't yeah. speak Afrikaans? Yeah, no. Bucky's, I, I found it hard talking with Bucky. Yeah, Bucks. he's a he's a hard old man. So no, he wasn't there at the time. But um, yeah, Victor and them were there. So mm-hmm. I'd like to, yeah, keep be involved with them and whatever. Yeah, I had a week with um, Victor. Were you with Victor when we were in the bar bar? Yes, that was. Yeah, yeah he's definitely not imposing. He's, he's very friendly guy. Yeah, very friendly guy. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, yeah he's good value. <laughs> okay, I remember. Yeah. Was that the time where we were heading to training? And it started to rain, and he said, "Turn the bus around." Yeah, we're going turn back. around. Turn we're, going around. Back. we're going back. Yeah, we're going so back. Good. Boys got on the yeah. beers. Training the throats. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, you talked a little bit about there how you were playing fullback at the time. So mm. you were a schoolboy midfielder, and then led. Well, once you got to the Springboks, you're a midfielder as well. But for a lot of that Super Rugby, you did have to play on the outside backs. Yeah, I actually didn't play any centre back at school. Um, I played my whole right through school. I played um, fullback and a bit of, yeah, a bit of fly half, and then. Um, Got to to the Bulls. Also, just played fullback, um, and then at the t- at the twenties, um, I played a bit of centre, and that's where the whole kind of centre thing started. And at the time, Jacques Free, he was obviously at the incumbent at the at the Springboks, and mm-hmm. guy that I looked up to. And and actually, when I got into the Springbok camp for the first time, he was he was still there, and he helped me so much. Um, it's always weird. You you think you're going to a squad, and obviously it's very competitive and yeah. stuff. But like, he was like the first guy to come come to me and be like. Hey, like this is this. You could help you, or you could do this. So that was that was really cool, you know. I played against him in 2015 when I was in Japan. Yeah, I came for a quick stint, and um, yeah, it's one of my probably best rugby memories. Getting a getting a game against him. That's good. It's it is rare at times, especially yeah. if you're coming in like wanting to yeah. compete. Him giving advice like that, like yeah. it um, makes a huge difference too, because automatically you're put into a new environment like Springboks. Yeah. You feel a little bit uncomfortable. You've got to try and find that you belong there, yeah. and then someone that's been there for so long, so welcoming, mm-hmm. that would have made a huge difference, I imagine. Yeah, and I think I've also learned, I suppose, over the time, especially as a player now. Like, I think the guys, the, the best players in the world or the best coaches in the world, aren't scared to share advice mm. because it kind of sharpens them and forces them to think about new things. You know. Yeah. So I think that's that's something that I've really come to think. I think guys that are that don't want to give a guy a tip, yeah, or don't want to say you could do it like this or why don't you think about doing something like that i think those yeah i think the guys that are really really up there and the coaches that are really up there aren't 
scared to share ideas. Mm. I think that's why they're constantly thinking about new things and staying on the cutting edge. Well, it's know? almost the role, really. Like yeah. you start up, someone helps you, you yeah. progress, then hopefully yeah. you can help someone else come through. Yeah. Um, you do that? Do you do a bit of coaching with the Japanese boys? And yeah, I, I've, I've, I've done quite a bit. I mean, I, I enjoy watching quite a bit of um, film over here and watching, especially when we play, like analysing you guys or analysing other teams. And Not so much Kintetsu, though. Hey, hey we, did, we did a lot of, a lot of homework on them. They've got some, some, some gun <laughs> players. Um, but, um, yeah, I think it, it just yeah, it just sharpens you, you know, it keeps, keeps you getting better and uh, I suppose that's what it's all about, you know. Do you have, uh, do you miss playing number 10? You want no, to have a game no, there? I don't miss playing number 10. I don't <laughs> no? play number 10. No, no, I don't think I'd, I'd go that well there. I'd, I'd probably lose my mind. Be a few carries, yeah, I reckon. Yeah, be a first few carries. Days. Yeah, yeah, I don't think guys outside. I'm outside back, and I know when the, when the 10s and stuff don't give us what I get a bit bleak. So, yeah, yeah I wouldn't enjoy that, no. You, uh, you had John Mitchell as a coach for a couple of years then. I know Gitz, you obviously had him as well. What, mm -hmm. what were your experiences with him like? Mitch and I still keep in contact uh, quite often. I think he... Um, he came to the, I know there was a, uh, he had a previous history and I mean, obviously when he came to the Bulls, guys were a bit like, hey, what's, what, what are we going to get here, you know? And um, he got to the Bulls and flip, we had a great experience. I think if you ask guys like Lothar Joach, um, Andre, all of the guys that, that were there at the time, they've only got good things to say, you know, he came in and um, just, yeah, I suppose gave us a nice structure to kind of attack off and um, we got the ball in our hands a, a bit more and we were mm -hmm. playing a, a decent band of rugby at the Bulls. Um, which we all enjoyed, and um, he got me quite involved in the. In, he was running the defence at the time, so we worked quite closely there in, in, in running the defence, and um, got players presenting in meetings and taking more ownership, which was which was pretty cool. I, I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I had a great time with him, and um, yeah, I don't know. I heard in the a previous kind of I suppose if you want to say the, year, the years prior to that, he was it's quite quite hard, but um, yeah, we had a really good experience with him. He was he was good. Yeah. I mean, my experience with him was good because I was on the leadership force, like at Western yeah. Force. So, as you said, he gives you a voice, gives you a platform yeah. to talk. For me, I had no complaints. Yeah. There was one game where we played the Brumbies and we're down in Perth. It was the last game of the year and we're down 19-0 at half time. And he came in and he pulled every coach out of there. Said they don't want to listen to a game plan, get out. Like, didn't give us any tips, no nothing. Walked out, took the coaches, said, see how they go without us. They went upstairs. We ended up winning the game. <laughs> That's unreal. Yeah, he then yeah, came yeah. in the change room. He saddled up next to me. We're having a beer, and he's like, "You can only pull a move like that every couple of years." Like almost, <laughs> like it was a bit of genius. So I, uh, I still That's remind awesome. him of that. Yeah, oh, it's like awesome. it's like what he did there, like was yeah. was brilliant. But no, he, um, I still, you know, get along with him every now and then. Chat to yeah. him, speak to him. He had a he had a really rough. Um, Experience a break in, in, in yeah, Joburg, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah but she obviously told me about that when he was, I think he was at, at the Lions when he was in Joburg. Yeah, Spurs. when he was at the Lions, yeah. Yeah, so um, yeah, that wasn't great, not a no. good experience. But he's, I know that he still loves South Africa and um, he lived there for quite a while. Yeah. And uh, obviously moved to, to the UK uh, recently, but yeah, he's a, he's a good man. Yeah. And we've, we've talked a little bit about your uh, Springboks debut, but what I guess makes it a little bit more unusual or, or different is that it was a World Cup year as well, which is a big pressure, I guess, for, for a young guy coming in. Yeah, to be honest, I wasn't really kind of thinking about that at the time. I mean, I, I got the, it was all happened pretty quickly. I had a, a, like my breakthrough in the, in the Super Rugby season and I was just kind of, you know, you, you get that first Super Rugby season and no one's ever kind of watched you play from opposition. So mm. that you, I mean, you, step off the left foot every time and no one kind of knows what happens. You get a line break where from the second season of Super Rugby was a lot harder because guys had known, okay, this guy's going to do this. Left, yeah. So that's when I had to really start working on my game quite hard and, and, and kind of develop things and, and I suppose work on different skill sets that I didn't have at the time. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the Springbok thing kind of happened. I got called into, I actually got called into a, a training camp when I was uh, in my 19 or with the 20s. Um, I got a uh, handicap took me down to Durban and called me in there, still playing for the Bulls under 19s or the 20s. And he invited me to go to a training camp down in Durban, uh, where, where my hometown is. So that was a bit of a shock. I was like, fuck, um, hmm. I'm called in to go to camp. <laughs> yeah, I remember getting to camp, um, the hotel in Durban, and everyone was like, fuck, who the fuck's this? <laughs> Here's <laughs> my bag. What's this kid doing? Yeah, yeah. I remember like sitting there and um, uh, yeah, getting like some shorts to train and some spring box shorts. I was like, fuck, those are cool. And, like, um, so that, yeah, that was a great experience. That was kind of like my first taste and 
and yeah, went, went back to the Bulls, played a bit of Super Rugby and then kind of got pulled into the squad and it just kind of had a good Super Rugby season and um, yeah, got a got a first game against the World 15 down in Cape Town and the debut against you guys over there in Brisbane. So um, yeah, it, just, it all happened pretty quickly. Yeah, what did that first experience going into that Springboks camp? I mean, let's talk a little bit about that more. I guess that might have helped you sort of adjust to, to when you came to the Bulls and meet, meet all these guys that sort of you kind of been used to already, I guess, dealing with these these guys with these sort of qualifications. I suppose you could say. Yeah, I think big thing for me when I started off was obviously you want to. I mean, as a youngster coming in, coming in, the, the way you want to earn the older guys or the older senior guys in the team's respect is by by playing. You know, you come in, you don't really say, you don't say anything. You just mm. you try to play as well as you can every week, so the guys, your senior guys, can respect you and kind of I think that's when you get kind of included in the team. You know. So that was kind of a big thing for me, just trying to play as well as I could on the weekends um, so I could kind of earn the older guys respect in the team. Um, and then when we got to the camps, it was pretty easy. There were a hell of a lot of Bulls guys there at the time. So, you know, there's, I mean, in all teams, there's those like... Clicks, click, yeah, 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 I know what like, you mean, yeah. yeah but you're, like, familiar yeah, with, yeah, you're familiar yeah. with the guys. So, I mean, I just kind of stuck close to a lot of the guys I knew and they kind of, yeah, it just looked, I mean, the Springbok environment's really amazing. And um, guys just pulled you in and just was like, then again, there were so many senior guys that you kind of just focus on what you had to do and yeah, just hammered away at that. So. And yeah. were the senior players, did they drive the standards? Like as in, you knew if you were out of line, they were the ones that used to chip you or? Yeah, I think uh, probably the one of my biggest rugby idols, if not my biggest, probably a guy like Farida Priya. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he used to drive standards just the way why he trained, like how he trained. Um, I know you played with, yeah, yeah, yeah. played with them. He's like he just used to be unbelievable. Never ever said much, but like, in, if things weren't good or whatever, he'd he'd chip in and say one sentence. The guys would be like, "Fuck, okay, mm. and they'd need to lift up our socks," here, you know. So, like a guy like that, or um, guy like yeah, there was a, there were a lot of them at the time. Skulkberger, um, Brian Banner, all those guys kind of dro dro like drove the, drove standards, the standards and. Yeah, which was which was amazing, you know. I remember that bar bars we, we played free free yeah. free in two thousand nine. Yeah. I um, we got to the hotel and I remember looking at the room list and he was my roommate, and like, he's my rugby yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking I'm with the to me the greatest heartbreak ever. Like yeah. we're in a room with him, we pick his brains. It's gonna be awesome. So I'm about to go into the room. I knock on the door and and then as I'm knocking on the door, Mornay Stane walks around the corner with his bags, and he goes, "Oh, sorry, sorry, bro." Uh, he's asked me to room with him <laughs> and then I'm just like well, where do I go oh. now and he sent me to his room wherever it was and I couldn't remember but I just my Afri heart was my, 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 heart, my, heart, yeah. my heart was like partially broken because I was like he doesn't want to room with me I don't get yeah. to like sit down and chew the fat yeah. but no yeah he was certainly someone I really look up to and looked yeah. up to and he didn't really say much as you said did, did nah. he? No, he didn't he didn't say much at all but well, like, I think his English was uh, super strong early on though was it? Yeah. Or was his English always okay? He was always, I mean, when he chatted to me, I mean, the, the chats weren't always like really long, but like, long winded. But I mean, um, his English was okay, you know. I yeah. think he, he, yeah, he just, when he spoke, you kind of, the guy that you just listen, you know, you, it's the guy that you just listen. I just remember sitting with him and just like listening to him talk and just be like, oh, this guy would watch a rugby clip. And I mean, I'd see like two things in the clip and he'd see like 10 things, you know. Yeah. Mm. So it's just like a different brain and um, yeah, just a proper legend, like you say. He must have not liked us. He's, he's playing the no English card when we're in the bar bars week. Yeah. No, nah, I reckon he liked you guys. So he probably... put his headphones in and didn't want to speak. <laughs> I, like, I just want to ask you a couple of questions. Uh... That's it. And 2015, going into that World Cup, um, what was that experience like for you as a, as a particularly young guy? Yeah, fuck, it was a bit of a roller coaster. I mean, I remember obviously the whole lead up to it, like when the send off back home was, was amazing. I mean, the training camps were really hard. We got thrashed, um, like trained really hard. Um, but yeah, the send off happened. And then obviously the first game we played against Japan and lost that. You know, I remember like walking back into the change room and like, fuck, it was, yeah, it was dead silence. And like, everyone, you were in that game? Yeah, I played that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then we obviously went on and got a few good wins, got a good win against Scotland. Um, yes, yeah, Samoa, we passed back. It was also a really physical game. Um, and then, yeah, I ended up playing a, a quarter final against Wales and then a semi final against New Zealand and just yeah. missing out really closely against them, you know. So from literally being like really at oh yeah, like being I mean Japan were unbelievable on the day and they completely deserved to win. But like from being down there to getting to a semi final and almost winning, um it was it was a really good experience for a first World Cup and for a first big tournament, uh, or my first big tournament 
Um, so yeah, it was it was really good. How good do experience. you how do you pick the mood of the, of the group back up after having lost that game against Japan? Like, was it very led by the senior players, the coaches, and if so, what were the messages and how did you guys manage to get back up? Yeah, so I remember John De Villiers was obviously he was the leader, and there was such a big leadership group there, guys with so much experience. They kind of just like took charge and took the reins and just were like the one game's not going to define mm-hmm. us, you know. And uh, we just went back and kind of did what we what we did well and. Um, yeah, the results started coming throughout the pool stages and then ended up you know, nail biter against Wales, but it was a good feeling to get a get a good win against them. And um, yeah, just I think the leadership group mm-hmm. kind of just, I think, think in any team that kind of goes on and makes any success, they've got a strong kind of core group and leadership group. And you guys have been part of many mm. successful teams and I'm sure it's been the same, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. The team wasn't the strongest team that the Springboks could feel though, was it? in that game against Japan? Were there a couple of no, normally senior players yeah, not playing? Yeah, I think there were a few, but I still actually, funny enough, I remember Faree, Faree talking that week and, and he was just hammering away, because he was at Santoro at yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was just- and he obviously would know Eddie. Mate, and, and he was just hammering away at like, you can't underestimate these guys. These guys are really good. I remember him saying to me, I think we were sitting in the sauna because we were staying, yeah, I can't remember, but like just saying these guys like play with like real, real big tempo, like they're really good. like. We're talking about Matsushima at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just like, you gotta watch this guy. He's really good. Like, I was playing 13. Yeah, so he come off the wing, off that the inside ball. And he, yeah, and just like really elusive and yeah. and stuff like that. I remember him saying things like that, and I was just like, obviously, never underestimate them. And not sure if guys did or whatever, yeah. but they, they they played a perfect game that day, you know. When you don't play against players, like you're yeah, saying, yeah. You, you you don't really. Yeah. You know, it's not that you don't underestimate them, but you don't really know that their full capabilities until yeah. you actually get the experience 100%. to play against them. Yeah. We were watching that game. Yeah, we were yes. getting strapped. Um, I was cheering for South Africa. I think I was the only yeah. one on the team that was, oh, that was sad was like when you lost. Japan, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gitz, Gitz made them push training back for us. Yeah. So that we I said, well, yeah, hold the bus, hold the bus. We're not going for Japan. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I went out and got myself a Japanese jumper. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. for, a, for a lot of people not involved in that game, you know, that, that's considered one of the great games. Yeah. I mean, I made Gets a movie about it. Yeah, <laughs> I'll tell you a story. They they caught there was a miracle of um, miracle of Brighton. Yeah, yeah so Brighton miracle. We were when when we went to play Panasonic a couple of weeks ago. Now the guy got up at our jersey presentation. He goes like the miracle at Brighton. We can have the miracle at Saitama. <laughs> 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 no Did you get it? Nah, nah. I think well, the, there's no miracle there for us. The beauty about that game is, or personally, is I, I mean, I got palmed in that game for the last try by Amanaki Mafi, who's yeah. a teammate of mine that's become yeah. a really close friend of mine. And I think that game sparked rugby in Japan in general and, and it's been amazing. So I like, I suppose as, that, as bad as that game was for us, I mean, I've made an awesome mate in, in Amanaki Mafi. He's a great teammate of mine and probably one of the most talented guys I've ever, ever played with. Mm. And um, Japan rugby's exploded, so it's, 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 it's Goro unreal. Maru after yeah, that. Yeah, Maru. Uh, like, it was like he was Justin Bieber. Yeah, I, me- I remember playing I had him at Toulon, yeah. and then I played him when he was at Yamaha, yeah, yeah. and all these people were lining up just to um, get his autograph. Yeah, I, mean, I thought they were there for me. We played against Yamaha. I, I came out as a medical joker. Um, that I played at Docomo straight after the World Cup. I think Izzy Falau ended up going yes. to Docomo yeah, for, yeah. in his place. And I remember warming up against Yamaha, playing against them, and he was kicking for poles. Like, this was after the World Cup. Mm. And the whole stadium was, were literally clapping <laughs> yeah. while he was kicking, like, poles or kicking for poles in the warm-up and kicking them over. And everyone was just going mad. It was, like, proper, like, I've never seen something like yeah. that before, you know? Yeah, it was so, similar um, after 2019. Matsushima, yeah. when he came back to Suntory, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's, just, uh, yeah. you know, the new Bieber, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, or like Tamura um, at Cannon, you know? Like exactly, they, they, yeah. Yeah. And then it was great for awesome, the game, awesome yeah. for, huge for the game. Awesome for the game. So, yeah, I mean, you kind of just put your ego to one side <laughs> and you just look at the facts, you know. It's, yeah. just, it's, been, it's been great, you know. So I've made a good mate out of that. The guy that actually just made me look like an idiot. He's a great mate of mine now and, yeah. Do you think the foreign influx of players to Japanese rugby has made a difference to the quality? Like, obviously, guys will be able to learn off guys like yeah. yourself, uh, training habits, training standards, and obviously seeing the game in a different way. Do you think that's helped grow the game here in Japan in terms of the quality? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, it's it's one thing that's so amazing about the culture is guys aren't scared to ask questions and they're not scared to kind of learn of other people. We're back home, you know, you're a bit like, mm. people are a bit iffy, like, if I go ask this guy, will he think, yeah, guys yeah, yeah. are keen to learn, yeah, and yeah. they'll work their asses off to, to get better. So, I mean, it's like, it's been awesome to see, like, Fuff get you now, he takes the halfbacks and the guys are kicking box kicks with him and, 
guys that are, we've got a halfback that's, I think he's 35 or whatever. Um, he's been at Cannon for, for 10 or 12 years, but he's still like willing to ask Fuff and asking him mm. to help him. He's also left footer, asking him to help with, uh, with his box kicks. And so I think stuff like that's awesome. And it's definitely, I think the IP that's getting put into Japanese rugby has definitely made a difference, you know? And so immediately after that World Cup, you, you came over here, right? That was your first yes, stint? Yes, I did a three, or, three or four month stint in Osaka at, um, at uh, Docomo. Um, yeah, it was, it was good. I was re really young at the time, so I wasn't really, it wasn't as good as the experience I'm having now because, you know, as you get older, you kind of start venturing out of it more and, mm. and you get to, you more outgoing and you keen to meet people. And so, but it was a great experience. I had an awesome time there. I mean, what was that like as, as a young guy um, coming into a quite a different culture, I guess? There must have been yeah. a few shocks at the time to you. Yeah, it was it was a, it was a big shock. I mean, I think anyone coming to Japan for the first time, it's a, it's a massive culture shock. You know, it's like, what's going on here? Um, but we, I was lucky. We had Henrik Brasso was at the club. Um, Yevon was with me, and Andre also came over with me at this for, for that that three or four months. So, yeah, I was what, like a I just stuck with those guys. Yeah, you know, yeah little club. as as you know, I was I was really where we're now. I'm i probably better mates with guys that aren't South Africans over here. I mean, yeah, like, guy like Sean McMahon or. I'm like, yeah, he's careful, become yeah. a, yeah, he's, <laughs> but he's, he's become one of my really good mates, you know, and um, that's, I think that's a cool thing as you, as you get older and you, you play against different guys over here, you become mates with like, like some different countries and stuff. And I mean, we've got guys on our team, like from Wales and over here and you, you plan trips like, and when you got time off, plan a trip, trip here or plan a trip there. Or, mm. I mean, when I go to Australia, I always catch up with Shawnee or things like that, you know, it's cool. Mm. Put up with, with, with you over there with, yeah, with Mona. With Mona. So like things like that, it's, it's cool, you know. Five or six years on from that, well, seven or eight years yeah. on from that. Yeah, old what was different about this experience compared to the previous one? Yeah, I think uh, as you get older as a player, you kind of, you, you just, I suppose I just had a better suppose, skill set. I could, was performing better and you get over here and then you got a lot more time to work on your game. Um, I think being in Japan, just, just rugby, you know, you go from training to rugby and it's, it, there's just so much time to, work on your game and I think that's why I love Japan so much you know you this all the focus is on rugby and you get a lot of time off as well to enjoy things outside of rugby so it's just yeah it's a good remedy to to play good rugby over here. I was talking to Bernard when he came over in 2015 but mm. he just came in 2015 for like a four month block yeah. similar like what yeah. you did whereas this time around he's enjoying a lot more because he's committed to multiple seasons yeah. so he knows that this is a place that he can make a difference and he's investing in, he wants yeah. to see the club grow. Do you find that similar with Cannon? Yeah, it's, it's actually, it's funny that you bring that up because I've been talking to a lot of our, our foreign boys and just saying like, I mean, especially with the recruiting over here, like if I was doing the recruiting, I'd, I wouldn't ever get a guy here on a quick stint because you you don't know if the guy's 100% invested, you know, mm -hmm. is the guy coming over to make a quick buck or is the guy really invested in the club and, and getting good results on the weekend, you know? Yeah. So like, the, and that's exactly that. When I when I came over here the second time, um, I, I knew I was in for two years and wanted to go on longer. So I was completely invested. I mean, I got to Canon here. We weren't doing that great the first year. Now we 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 we're doing pretty decent. The guys have evolved and the teams evolved. I think being invested and you en enjoy it a lot more. You you like I've made the apartment homely and you it's, it becomes home. You it's know? Home, so yeah, yeah. It, it's home for me. That's my, it's my base. So it's definitely, that's, that's a great point, yeah. Do you miss Super Rugby at all? Or what, what's your thoughts with that, how South Africa is now not involved in Super Rugby there in that yeah. new competition? Yeah, definitely. I think Super Rugby was, was unbelievable and it was, it, was, it was great. I mean, but coming over here, I mean, as, as a centre, I get to play against an international centre every weekend. Yeah. yeah. So like, I mean, I'm playing against Osama Karevi or um, Fafita or, uh, or playing against an international centre, Crotty or every weekend. So, I mean, I'm having to match up against a, a world-class centre every weekend, which is which has been awesome for me, you know. Mm -hmm. they, I think people were chatting, I was chatting to that mate of mine that's over here now about, about the league, because he came to the game on the weekend. He was like, fuck this, like it was physical, it was fast, the ball mm -hmm. was like, guys were moving the ball around, it was quick, some massive guys. And like, um, I think people don't understand how good the league is at the moment, mm -hmm. yep. because it's not televised all around the world. Um, so I think, yeah, that's, that's been one thing. I think the league over here is really good. I mean, I get a lot of touches on the ball um, with, with our current game, pl game plan and stuff, and I get, to, um, I get to link a bit and kind of do things. So I feel like my game's developing here, which is great. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of enjoyment out of it. So, um, 
yeah, for me, it's I don't really miss Super Rugby that much, you know. It's I'm, I, I dig the league over here, and it's it's really good, you know. So. Yeah. Just with being over here in Japan, like you speak so passionately about the competition. Yeah. It's, it's such a great adver- advertisement yeah. for it. Um, initially, when you ca- came over, like the second time around, being a bit more invested, in, what were some of the challenges, purely like from a rugby perspective, that you faced, um, that you had to get your head around, or sort of help with the Japanese guys to improve on because obviously you're very experienced yeah. having played test rugby having played super rugby what were some of the differences that were quite challenging the biggest thing was mindset number one yeah. um, I think guys like we'd, we'd go all good against teams that were similar ranked to us but mm-hmm. then we'd go up against the Suntory and the boys would just be like, like shit themselves, you know, bit, shit yeah. themselves or like be yeah. like looking at like stat books and being like oh this guy like look at this guy look at this. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean yeah I do know what you so, mean yes yeah like, so I've um, experienced that. so I think being able to, to, to talk the language a bit better I mean mm-hmm. I can speak some decent, some pretty uh, decent Japanese has helped a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I think mindset has been a big thing, yeah. just kind of getting guys to flip their mindset. And I think getting a guy like Keske in with us, um, Sawaki, he's been he's been good with that. He's pretty ruthless, and yep. he's obviously had a lot of success at Suntory and with Japan and stuff like that. So he knows what works and what doesn't, with, especially with the Japanese boys, gets the best out of them. So that's yep. been. That's been something that's been really interesting, I think. So, yeah, probably mindset's been the biggest thing, you know. That senpai mentality at times yeah. can be quite limiting, yeah. can't it? Like, you, yeah. they, they find it hard to challenge senior players, yeah. even if the senior players might be in the wrong. And then, yeah, when you do come up against players or big teams, yeah. it's almost like out of respect, they sort of are a bit more passive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were lucky. We had um, Fumi Tanaka, who, who was there for my first two seasons at Canon, and he kind of broke mm-hmm. down that whole yeah. stigma of senpai, kohai, and meetings. So he was like... Um, asking guys just what's your opinion say something or like not don't just nod your head and say yes mm. um mm. have a have a say you know so he he was good in that sense and i think he got that kind of playing at the highlanders and playing all over the world kind of got a a feel for that and um i think it's just more about breaking things down like that and creating an environment where guys are kind of comfortable to talk about yeah about rugby things you know because i mean at the end of the day like they're the guys on the field making the mm. decisions so yeah have you come over here with any family or partner or anything like that no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm a ace archer, so. <laughs> it's and just, how's that it's going? Just me. Yeah, it's going, it's going. Have you been in any compas? Do any? you know what a compa is? No. So, it's usually you've got um, three guys and three girls, and you just go on a date somewhere. And usually, like, one of the guys and one of the girls, they know each other, but they're not romantically connected. And you no. just go for dinner and. No, so I'm, I'm, I, was, I was in a relationship. Uh, up until about a year ago, so yeah, I mean that's that's probably something that I'd, I'd, I'd ask I'd, Kaji. I'd, 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 I'll ask the boys about that. How do you, you know, know about that? Because the boys have come in. Yeah, and <laughs> I was just about to ask. How yeah. do you know about that? You reckon yeah. I was going on? I'm combat. just asking. Yeah. I'm just asking. Uh, oh no! Yeah, I, I haven't. Going I'm going to ask him. Yeah. I'm going to ask him on Thursday or Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. Why haven't you told me about this? Um, why would I tell you about that? You're not single. Oh, I'm just interested. Yeah. Yeah, well, you shouldn't be. Um, yeah, yeah, so we've been talking about the compa <laughs> or, or Terrace House. Okay. Terrace House, did you ever watch that? No, no, no. Yeah, it's basically like the big brother here of um, Japan. Okay. So it was almost like, for me, yeah. trying to connect with these guys, yeah. I'd be watching these shows so we'd have something to talk about when you're in the yeah, onsen or the spa, common, yeah. rather than just rugby. Yeah. Because um, also my Japanese yeah. isn't good, yeah. wasn't good, yeah. um, but you Terrace House, you could do that. a bit of a, like I could speak yeah. broken yeah. Like even bad English, yeah. they understand bad English rather than mm-hmm. like fluent English. So yeah, I must just say, that like way. on that something in common. I mean, we've got something awesome with us. Like we started like a coffee club. So after trainings, um, fuck, there's probably about fifteen to twenty of us now. Like good um, mix up of, of, of foreigners and, and, and Japanese boys where we mm-hmm. meet up for coffees. Is that the just, hairdressing cafe? Yeah, 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 yeah same yeah, place. Yeah, yeah Paula, yeah. but it's it's developed now. It's really good. I mean, yeah. it's got a deck now and there's chairs outside and um, it's it's quite cool. So we all sit there and the guys kind of try us when they bro- in our broken Japanese and their broken English we kind of just uh, like link up like you say you know just get to know each other a bit better and w- what guys like play a bit of golf together talk a bit of shit do you, f- do you find the connections easier now that there's less workers so yeah so yeah a lot like of guys a lot of them are now pro- professional yeah it's, so it's previously mm. when I was here we had had half the group yeah. mainly were um, workers yeah. So there's only, the foreigners were pretty much the pros. Yeah. So we always had that divide. You try and include yeah. them as much as possible, but often when we finish training, yeah. they're going to work or we've already done our weights in the morning, yeah. then they do their weights at night. Whereas now you guys are, are linking a lot more. Yeah, I also think like as 
because the guys are pro, they obviously get more time to do extra mural things, and that's where guys drop their guard. You know, mm. that's where you get to know mm. someone a bit yeah. better. I mean, over a few beers, you get to know someone's background a bit better, or like what makes him tick, what yeah. like what's his wife's name, what's his kids' names, what do they like, what do they do. So I think yeah, definitely the pro players it gives them a lot of more time to do things like that, come to coffee club or to because they're not going to the company every day. Yeah. You know, so you you get to see each other a lot more and kind of I suppose get to uh, get to know each other a bit better. You guys are in a pretty pretty cool situation where you yeah. stay. Like you stay with a lot of other Suntory boys yeah. and Toshiba boys as well, don't you? Yeah, it's so good. Um, we stay with us in the same block as the Suntory yeah. boys. So like, I mean, I can like last week, Shawnee he'll invite me up for dinner. I'll go ha- up and have dinner yeah. with him. And so it's yeah, it's, it's we've got an unreal setup. It's, yeah, it's I guess it's that's so a nice good. experience about coming over as well. Yeah. You get to meet people that you usually play against mm. from other countries, and you get to yeah. mix and mingle, and like you say, get to know yeah. their back back stories and and they meet their families. Yeah, always a tricky one when you're playing Santori in the week because then it's like a, <laughs> the battle of Waka Badai. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. so oh it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always it's always a funny one, but it's, it's you know when you're walking back from the shops, it's always quite a long chat when you're playing them during the week, and it's. T- from, from a 10 minute chat, it goes on just, hey, how you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, I'll <laughs> see you on the weekend. Yeah, yeah I'll see you on the yeah. weekend, yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's good, man. It's, it's, yeah, it's really good. What is it like being single over here? Do you, do you knowing that potentially in a few years you're going to go home, do you sort of put dating aside for a few years? Or <laughs> I thought you were about to say put yourself on the market. Uh, or? Well, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. You just kind of, I just kind of live in. Kind of enjoy every day. <laughs> yeah, live in the know, moment, just, stay just present. Live in the moment, just stay yeah, present. You know, answer. my New Year that's resolution is <laughs> being present. You know, yeah. great answer. So, um, yeah, whether it's playing rugby or, or doing whatever, just yeah, enjoy. Yeah. So, are you yeah. on the dating apps over here? No, oh, I'm, I'm not on the dating apps. He's pushing. I can, me. I can honestly say that you can go through my phone. I'm not on the dating apps. <laughs> so, um, yeah, right, I trust you. <laughs> I'll go through your phone. Uh, if you're welcome. Like. Yeah. <laughs> Back to your time in the box. Um, so you had Asta Kotsia come in for a couple of years and then Rassi came in after that. I mean, what were those changes like for you guys during that period? Obviously you had a, a tough couple of years and then Rassi came in and I presume you made quite a few changes at that time? Yeah, I think I, I was lucky to work with a few coaches over through, through my Springbok career so far. And um, I think it, with every coach comes a different style and comes a different, I suppose, outlook on how they want to play and, and, and whatever. And we, at the time, had a similar group that kind of just worked through a lot of those, I mean, when a lot of those guys finished at the same time, guys that had 100 caps, I mean, a lot of those guys that had a lot of experience. And then you kind of like being the young guy that just kind of has to focus on what he does. And now that whole leadership group's gone mm. and all the guys that have to kind of step up and then you got guys like Sia starting to step up and guys like Evan that had played a lot of tests and they kind of were forming this new leadership group, which is currently the leadership group, you know? Mm. So it was just, I suppose it was just a, a transition kind of period in South African rugby and um, yeah we had some dark times and I mean 2016 2017 it wasn't easy you know I mean we were losing like 50 points which was which was shit you know and then obviously Rassi came in and gave us a nice reality check and um, told us pretty much that we <laughs> we weren't great yeah. and that we needed to work a lot harder and and, and get get our ourselves I mean back where where, where he thought the potential of the group was, you know. Um, so that was a great thing. I mean, he came in there and basically just told us that uh, you guys can win the World Cup, yeah. we can win the World Cup if we do this, if we work hard, if we kind of, um, yeah, so he had a plan and mm. that was, it was pretty um, convincing, so yeah. yeah. Just, just with him as a coach, yeah. what would you say his greatest strength is? Is he someone who's really good at building culture and establishing a, a a really positive environment or is it like is he more in the technical and the tactical side of the game yeah so that's a, it's, it's a, yeah it's, it's a good question well because normally you get a coach that's that can get a get a group of guys up and he's technically not that great mm. um or you get a guy that's a, that, that, that's a like a genius on the thing but he can't like he can't get guys to run through a wall for him mm. where rassi has got a really good mix i mean i haven't played for many coaches that are good at doing both you know so he can get guys up and fuck you, you'll jump off a 30 story building for him. Um, and he's, he will tell you exactly what this guy does, mm. what tendency this player has, which hand he uses to hand off more often than not. So he's, he, I think he watches a, little, a shitload of rugby, yeah. but at the same time, he's, he's got the group of players 
they'd really want to play for him and, and want to win games for him. So. He also seems to get that balance right. Like he likes yeah. to have a beer and have a bit of fun. Yeah, so that's the thing. I mean, he always says to us, I mean, he's he's our mate, you know. Yeah. But I mean, there's obviously, as a player, you know, there's that line. There's a know? line of respect. But um, yeah. I think that's a cool thing that with playing under him uh, of late and also, I mean, it's big over here in Japan. I mean, I don't know how it is back home with you guys, but yep. like coaches are kind of your, your, you're more friendly with coaches. Like you'd yep. have a beer with a coach yeah, or you go to a dinner and it's it's not that awkward kind of, um, yeah. you know you know what I mean? Yeah. Where, where with Rassi, it's kind of like that, where he's, he's um, yeah, you, it's kind of like a mutual respect thing, you know, you yeah. earn the respect of him as a, as a, as a friend and a yeah. coach um, and as a colleague. And um, yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of, Versus vice versa, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think part of that respect is yeah. both of you know where the line is. Yeah. There's a line that you yeah. don't cross, and as much as you can be mates, having a beer or going to yeah. dinner, once you get on the field, you also understand that he's your yeah. coach, and yeah. you've got to make sure that you have that respect for him as yeah. well. I think. But I think when you do get to that point of like that that mutual respect, you don't want to drop a guy like that. You know what I mean? Because you know, yeah. fuck, I don't want. I wouldn't want yeah, to drop I don't my want mate. Let him, yeah. yeah. If if you're a really good mate of mine, or it's like fuck, the last thing I want to do is disappoint you, or mm-hmm. yeah. will not do well by your standards or what we've agreed upon. You know. Yeah. So I think yeah, that's that's it's cool. I think that's the the, the best kind of situation yeah. you get in, in in the sport we play. We speak about like he he's just someone who likes to have a good time yeah. and, and understands balance. You got any good stories or funny stories of times in camp or in the lead up to the World Cup, anything like that? Yeah, I think just uh, like I mean before when was before the World Cup, I think like on 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 a few camps, like I mean obviously just get a few beers out and the boys pack a circle and mm. just mm. some good have some good yarns and. Just uh, yeah, just I suppose creating um, opportunities for guys to kind of lower their guards and, yeah, just be, and vulnerable, be vulnerable, you know. Yeah. So I think that's that's something that I think sticks out where a lot of guys are just really like big on the rugby side and then don't worry about the human aspect, which yeah. is a massive thing, you know. So yeah. I think yes, I think coaches that are successful are really good at kind of finding that balance, you know. So, and he uh, he found Twitter during COVID. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 so obviously he likes to have a dance. A lot of, a lot of raw. I think he's just kind of. Um, I think Chesn said it in the in the week. It's just a guy that's kind of fighting for, just for everyone to get a fair chance, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as 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 South Africans or whatever. I don't know the whole thing. I don't want to get deep in it, but um, no, no, yeah, no. he's a, it probably comes from a good place, you know. Yeah. So, I was more talking yeah. about his dancing once oh, he gets the, drunk. The, the dance. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I actually don't know what's a, going he's on. He's a mean dancer. Yeah, 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 he yeah. can dance. He can dance and. Uh, yeah, and it was, it was quite a lot of people in South Africa, like, during that, it was obviously a shit time like, during yep. COVID and stuff, and, like, the videos came out, and it was a big thing back home. Yeah. It brought a lot of joy to a lot of people. Oh, yeah. So, um, I was yeah, waiting for Eddie like Jones to open up his a dog and, uh, Twitter account, start yeah, moving his so, hips. You reckon he'd be able to dance? I don't think so, no. My guess would be no. Who's that now? Eddie Jones. Eddie. Oh, so Eddie. I was waiting for him to open an account. Oh, he'd he'd probably be, make you be do a video. Yeah. Make oh, yeah, he'd send me a message. Gets... Dance, 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 You'd do it for him. I'd have to. (laughs) I wouldn't want to, but I'd have to. In 2019, um, World Cup, so Rassi took the team with about 18 months to go. I mean, was there immediate buy into sort of the vision he had? I mean, when he was telling you guys that, Mm. you know, you weren't up to standard at that time, that was probably something you already knew in a little way, right? Yeah, I think deep down you kind of know when you're getting Mm. pumped, (laughs) you're doing something wrong, you know, so... It was just a good reality check for us when he came in and kind of, he's a very factual guy, so he came in and kind of just showed us this and this, like I mean, a lot of things that had to do with the effort of guys and uh, I think a lot of off-field stuff as well where guys are more focused on other things and not mm-hmm. just rugby, you know. Um, so yeah, it was a good reality check for everyone and um, I think just good to go look in the mirror and just think like, am, am I doing what I can to, to win a World Cup, you know. And um, yeah, it was it was good for us and everyone kind of, turned around and pulled together and yeah, we worked out pretty well. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that World Cup because you yeah. you were out for quite a bit of it, weren't you, with injury? Yeah, so I, I got injured in the first game, but um, stayed on a few weeks just to see if the hamstring would get better. Um, unfortunately, it didn't, but I was still very much part of it and um, still got to um, be here for the final and was part of, of the whole thing and had a good night before the final. and. We had a chat to Fuff, and Fuff was saying that one of the greatest strengths of that group were the guys who weren't playing. Yeah. You know, the guys who had to hold the pads and the support yeah. staff and the support crew of mm. the team, because they were the guys that remained positive and, yeah. and made sure that you know the team was as prepared as possible. Yeah. What, what was your experience around that? Like, as, as obviously being someone who unfortunately yeah. missed out on playing. Yeah. So I, th- I think that's. I mean, any team that's really successful is the guys that aren't playing and how their attitude is and how they. Because I mean, it's a shit. Mm. I mean. 
you go i mean i didn't and for my whole career basically and that i was always starting and stuff and then you go to not playing and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's an interesting thing because you know you obviously bleak you don't you're not playing you really want to play but at the same time you got to put your your kind of i wouldn't say ego or whatever yeah, to, to the mean, side your desires yeah your you know, desires yeah. and your things and to be like fuck it the main thing yeah is the, is the is the team and i mean one thing that i've i, think, I don't know if it was actually john mitchell who, who said it to me when he was at the bulls but it was it was winning together is better than winning alone yeah and i think when you kind of understand that whole concept of like i mean at the end of the day at the end of the world cup we all fucking stood on the thing together and yeah. everyone got a medal and it was i mean the memories you make together along the way and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff um is it's kind of the, the 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 big thing you know so yeah it was it was good the guys that were off field and skulk brits played a big part in that yeah. you know he he was kind of like he i think he knew and i mean he knew before the world cup he wasn't going to play all the games yep because you had Malcolm and Bongi and those guys who were, I mean, still are just amazing. But Skull kind of kept that group so like tightly knit and um, and also I think the coaches and stuff made it fun, you know. So the guys off the field had had, had sessions and things like that where it was where it was made fun and that um, everyone had kind of had their place in the group and mm -hmm. kind of everyone was had 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 that buy-in. And I think that that's a that's a big part of a of a yeah. successful squad, you know. Because I mean, we know these days that. In any team, whether it be in a top league or Super Rugby, you need a squad yep. that wins your game. You get a few injuries, and then it's a different story, you yeah. know. So, yeah. Obviously, that's the pinnacle. Like that yeah. was, it's every rugby player's dream yeah. to win. Um, you guys did it, but 2023. So you were obviously injured for that. Mm. You're still a part of it and a large part yeah. of helping the group get prepared. But is there still some burning desire for you now yeah. to still win it and be playing? Like, is there a part yeah. of that that you want to? Yeah, massive. Uh, it's something I think about every day. Like I really want to be a part of. I want to be on the field. I want to be playing. I want to be. I want to. When that final whistle goes, you want to be on that field. You know. Yeah. Or just be a part of it, whether yeah. you're playing off the bench or not. Like, hundred percent. Yeah. Or at least being know. fit or able. Yeah, being fit or even just even not you're selected, able. just being yeah. knowing that fuck it wasn't an injury that was keeping me out or yeah. whatever. But yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I think I think you ask any player, he'll tell you the oh, same. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. I just um, yeah, it would be yeah. I'd, I'd I'd love love to get another another shot. You know, I mean, a lot of hard work and water under the bridge that still needs to go by. But I mean, I'll yeah, I'll do everything I can to kind of try to get myself a spot there. You know, so yeah. yeah. And I mean, you've said you know you you had to obviously think about the bigger picture, the team that 2019 World Cup. Yeah. How quickly after that that hamstring injury did were you able to sort of get over the fact that actually you might not be able to play a part on the field in that tournament? Yeah, so it was a tricky one. I mean, I, I mean, as any player, you kind of it's always just like next job thing, you know. So I was like had the hope that I obviously got it scanned and then had the hope that I was could go home. Rashi was like, I could go home and and rehab the thing, and maybe if I was ready to go again and there was an injury, I could come back into the yeah, squad. You always hold that hope. So that was my whole thinking. My thinking changed immediately. Like, okay, get home. Mm -hmm. um, I got I went back to the Bulls and got straight into the rehab there, trying to get my hamstring right. So like. And it was a lot worse than what I actually thought it was. Um, uh, and yeah, I was just rehabbing, rehabbing, rehabbing. Um, obviously, still chatting with the boys that were over here and just trying to get my hamstring right in case there was an injury yeah. so I could go back and be a part of it. Um, obviously, it didn't happen, but I mean, I was, yeah, my whole focus just shifted to getting my hamstring right. Yeah. 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 And that, that's that's the way of it, isn't it? That, yeah. that you can go to the tournament and you can injure it, and you don't even mm. get to stay with the team. You do have to go home. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but I mean, then again, like a guy like um, yeah, because we were everyone was so like inclusive of each other and like aware of each other. I think mm. um, Evan hit up a, a really big guy that supports South African rugby, um, Gavin Verigis, and he flew Trevor and myself, Trevor Yakani and myself, back to the World Cup. Mm. Um, to join That's up cool. back with the boys and we surprised them at the hotel in like a few days before the final um, yeah had a massive night before the final <laughs> <laughs> yeah and Rapongi, it was really good and uh, I would still say Trev and I joke that we, we won the game the night before yeah. so um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> we um, yeah it was it was just good memories it was nice to come back and check all the guys and yeah. I think they also got a lot of energy from us being back here and um, that was just yeah, pretty good. It's interesting hearing yourself and like having spoken to Fuff speak like that group seemed like it was so yeah. tight knit. Yeah. Like you really cared about each other because yeah. of the, the conversations that you've had in, in vulnerable yeah. positions. And I mean, hearing you guys talk, it's no secret why you've yeah. obviously won the world. You won the World Cup. Yeah. Um, is that moving into this year's World Cup? Do you, 
is that obviously like culturally having the same group of players almost like same core of players is that is that a big focus for you guys again to make sure that you you create that good culture and that good environment heading into the world cup yeah i think in any team that that kind of glue like you're speaking i call it the glue you know in mm. a team like it's 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 important you know because when you get those dark times and games or though with like those dark spots that kind of glue kind of keeps you together and gets you through those tight games you know so i think that is something we know we've got yep. and, um I think guys will know what they expect from each other in terms of standards. Mm. Standards are really high. Yeah. I mean, like at the end of the year now in camp, uh, they've set really high standards and like, yeah, so it's, it'll be good. I think a lot will be expected from each other, um, which is great. Yeah. And um, guys really care for each other. So yeah, it's, I think it's a good remedy for, um, to, yeah, to go on and kind of try to try do it again, you know, so yeah. And I mean, most guys who go to a World Cup are so hyper focused on the tournament that they don't yeah. get to experience sort of the, yeah. you know, the celebrations around them. But obviously, yeah. you kind of got to see it from both points of view. You were there as a player to begin yeah. with, and then you were there almost as a as a fan. I mean, yeah. what was that like? You know, sort of coming in. What was the World Cup like in Japan? Yeah, it was weird. I mean, I don't know how you find it now, like when you're done. But like, I think when you're there as a player, you you're there to perform and win. You know, you're not there to be a tourist. You know, I mean. And I think going back there, it was kind of weird, like you're watching a game. It's always shit watching when you know you could be playing. Well, so I it, did the yeah. 2019 World Cup, but yeah. uh, from um, like commercial ambassador yeah. role. And you, must you don't realize, together, <laughs> well, not really, but I didn't realize how big the event is. Uh, so you're there and the crowd, the music, the, yeah. the TV coverage, like yeah. newspapers, just it like it's yeah. global news at the time. Yeah. But then when you're playing, in that it's bubble. no different for you. Yeah. You go to you go to training, you field like it's a normal yep. test week. You prepare for the test. Yep. You're in your bus. You drive to the stadium. The yeah. stadium's full. It's a good yeah. atmosphere. You play your game. Yeah. Get in the bus. You go home. Plan you kind of week. don't really under yeah. you underestimate actually yeah. the significance of it, yeah. like how enormous it is yeah. as an event. Yeah, that that, that is probably. I mean, because we were walking around before the game, and we were obviously out, and you saw everyone like all the South Africans and all the other pe English people like. In the jerseys and everything, and you also like you like fuck. This is quite big, Huge, you know? yeah. But other other times when you're playing, you're in that bubble where you kind of uh, you're not reading social media, you're not reading what this guy says and what the newspapers are saying because it's it's irrelevant. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You just focus on on winning. So yeah, that's that that is is how, how pretty what what it was always like at yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Unfortunately, guys, that's pretty much all we've got time for yeah. this <sighs> evening. It goes so fast. Call it, it there. Beyond. Thanks, Jesse, for joining us. Yeah, and, thanks uh, for having me, man. As always, thanks, Will. Thanks, man. brother. Yeah. Appreciate your time, brother. Yeah. That was awesome.